get your Bibles out and go to Acts chapter 2. We're going to get into the Word. I'm excited about the Word of the Lord on today. We're going to start a new series of teaching that I know is going to bless your life as you're turning to Acts chapter 2. Because I know we're a church that can multitask, shout out, speak on it. You know, there are times in our life that we really want more in-depth information on a matter. And we're starting this new summer series called Speak On It. Shout out, Speak On It. And this series really is to answer those probing questions about spiritual matters that kind of linger in the minds of believers. And so uh, there are, have always been those in every generation who really want to know more about the things of God. And you got some questions. How many got some questions? It's okay to have questions. I know the old generation, or you may have heard people say, don't question God, but I can ask God a question, and if he didn't want me to know the answer, then he would have never made inspired the mind of those to write the Bible. This is our manual of how we live life. So it's okay to ask God some questions. And so for the next several weeks, we're going to go and, and some of those questions that we have concerning our life as a believer, we're going to dig a little deeper. We're going to speak on it to those controversial issues that often others try to sweep under the rug. But I believe by the grace of God in this series that the Holy Spirit will reveal through the scripture the truth that we should live by. You know, when you look in the Bible, there are a plethora of scripture passages that illustrate the desire of people to know more about spiritual matters and so today we're going to dive into the scripture and address those things because how many want to know how to do it right how many want to know what the bible says about situations somebody shout speak on it and today our first speak on it topic is what's so special about the day of pentecost you know y'all look amazing in your white give yourselves a big hand clap but see, Pentecost is more than just wearing white on Sunday. Pentecost is more than just uh, rejoicing and shouting and a feeling. I want to look in the scripture and allow the scripture to speak to us about what's so special about the day of Pentecost. Somebody shout, speak on it. Acts chapter 2 verse 12 says, And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? Others mocking, saying, These men are full of new wine. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken as you suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it came to pass in the last days, said God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. On the day of Pentecost, what's so special about Pentecost and this word that we hear oftentimes in the church, the day of Pentecost was 50 days after the resurrection of Jesus. The disciples were told to wait on going out to win the world, but to go to Jerusalem and wait for the prophetic promise of the coming of the Holy Spirit. It was to be the launching of a new dispensation. You know, we're speaking on it. So dispensation simply means a particular space in time that God will deal with mankind in a specific way. And so the prophets of old had prophesied it, this coming of the Holy Spirit, and Jesus had taught them about him, the Holy Spirit. Period. And on the 50th day after the resurrection of Jesus, the world changed. Such good news to know because his existence had always been, but now after Pentecost, he had a specific unique ministry of equipping and empowering the believer for incredible victory in life. And much has been said in church about the Holy Spirit, but until you conduct a personal study on him, you will never understand or get the full impact of his ministry to you. And what I want to do today as we start this series of Speak On, it, I want us to go beyond the religious rhetoric about the Holy Spirit and I want us truly to learn his mission on earth and how we make the most of his willingness to help us in our day-to-day -day living. You've got to know the Holy Spirit is more than just a feeling. 
It's more than just you shouting. It's more than just a song. But the Holy Spirit is so that uh, the mission, the will of God can be fulfilled in the earth. And you as a believer need to know how to make the most of this, of the Holy Spirit and his willingness to help you in your everyday life. Can we go deeper this morning? Can we speak on Pentecost this morning? I've got two points today. The first point is the promise of Pentecost is established. See, for the believer, the word of God establishes truth for us and outweighs any denominational perspective of popular opinion. And so I'm using the term Pentecost as a metaphor for the coming of the Holy Spirit, this event that took place and his ongoing ministry to the saints. See, you got to know it was more than just an event, but there's an ongoing ministry that's available to every believer so the Holy Spirit is the present day agent of the Godhead that's assigned to man to help bring to pass the will of God in the earth I need to say that again the Holy Spirit is the present day agent of the Godhead assigned to man to help bring to pass the will of God in the earth he abides in us to minister to us and to work through us to the glory of God it's more than just a jerk it's more than just a feeling but you got to know that the Holy Spirit abides in us to minister to us and to work through us to the glory of God so let's lay some foundation because we really want to understand this so we don't miss the opportunity to have the Holy Spirit working in our lives and the first thing we want to lay the foundation on is the promise of the Holy Spirit was prophesied to us see it was prophesied the coming of the Holy Spirit was never intended to take human race by surprise because the prophets of old, including Jesus, who functioned as a prophet under the Old Testament, spoke of the ministry of the Holy Spirit. So I can see it in the Old Testament and the New Testament. This, uh, this, uh, you know, letting us know about the coming of the Holy Spirit. If you look in the Old Testament and you see it over in Joel 2, 28 through 32, it is what Peter stood up and spake concerning the phenomenon of tongues and the rejoicing that was taking place he recited the words of the prophet Joel and so the prophet Joel prophesied about the coming of the Holy Spirit he prophesied about the glorious day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit would make his entrance into the earth and so if you go back to Acts chapter 2 verse 12 we stopped it about how uh, he said and I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your young men uh, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy your m young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams and uh, I think it picks up at verse 17 and on my servants and on my handmaids I will pour out in those days of my spirit and they shall prophesy and I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath blood and fire and vapor of smoke the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and noble day of the Lord come and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved but when Peter stood up he said it clearly but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel the prophet Jesus prophesied about the coming of the Holy Spirit on multiple occasions Jesus prophesied and taught the disciples and all who would listen about the day of the coming of the Holy Spirit in his dynamic ministry go over to John chapter 14 and if you did not bring your Bible they're gonna put the scriptures on the screen so that you can see it but I want you to have confidence in the truth of God's Word John 14 verse 16 says and I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not neither knoweth him but ye know him for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you but the comforter which is the Holy Ghost whom the Father will send in my name he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you go to John chapter 17 because here's another occasion that Jesus prophesied about the uh, to the New Testament about the coming ministry of the Holy Spirit and have the Holy Spirit that would be given to them on the day of Pentecost John 7 verse 37 says in the last day that great day of the feast Jesus stood 
stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. So we can see on more than two occasions them prophesying with Joel and the prophet Jesus about the coming of the Holy Spirit. But you got to know that the promise of the coming of the Holy Spirit was personalized. That it's more than just a, a prophecy. It's more than just something that we should read about. But, but this is where it takes on an individual viewpoint for us all. That we are grateful and, and, and we understand the corporate view about how the Holy Spirit in, impacts the, the life of the church and the believer. But you've got to know that there is some, there's an individual view of the ministry of the Holy Spirit for your life. When you look in the scripture, Jesus and the apostles stress the in usness of the Holy Spirit. I know y'all saying in usness. Yes, in usness. Now, I know there's some pushback at the thought of an in in invisible being living on the inside of us, but I want you to think about it. There are living things beyond the natural sight all around us. That there are some things that when they invented the microscope they, uh, microscope, they found out in the 1700s that there was a whole new world of microbiology living and levels that there are things in the atmosphere, molecules that we cannot see with our physical eyes, but yet they still exist. And so it is. The word of God gives us insight into the realm of the spirit to know things we would otherwise not know. So just because I don't see it, I've got to know that the Holy Spirit is in me to work in my life. I want to take you to a couple passages because the Bible is clear that the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of us. That's in our human spirit. And so when you look in the Bible, there's the scriptural revelation of the Holy Spirit that, uh, that he is, the Holy Spirit is in you. That when you make Jesus the Lord of your life, the scripture says that your spirit becomes a lot to God. So you've got to know that the Holy Spirit is in you so that you can live the overcoming abundant life. I just read it to you. In John 14 uh, verse 16 through 17 but go over to Romans 8 because the Bible lets us know that the Holy Spirit shall be in you but Romans 8 verse 9 says but you are not controlled by your sinful nature you are controlled by the Spirit if you have the Spirit of God living in you and remember that those who do not have the Spirit of Christ living in them do not belong to him at all. And Christ lives within you, so even though your body will die because of sin, the Spirit gives you life because you have, met, have been made right with God. The Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. And just as God raised Christ Jesus from the dead, he will give life to your mortal bodies by the same spirit living within you. I need somebody to shout out the Holy Spirit lives within me. And that's if you made Jesus Lord of your life. So it's more than a ticket to heaven when you say yes to the Lord. But you've got to know when you make that declaration of Jesus as Lord and Savior, your spirit man becomes alive to the things of God. And the Holy Spirit is in you so that you can do and fulfill the will of God in the earth. But that means as a believer, we have to rely on the Holy Spirit. See, the saints have to get to the place where we stop relying on other stuff, but we rely on the Holy Spirit in us to help us live the overcoming abundant life. See, I want to get you to the place where you're relying on the Holy Spirit because, see, the, you got to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. And when you rely on him, he helps us to live out our lives in Christ Jesus. He is the agent of Christ in the world, and he came into our lives as a representative of Jesus when, he, when you accepted Jesus as Savior and Lord. You didn't feel him, but he's there. I know you're saying, Pastor... What, what you mean? Because see, we get caught up a lot of times on feelings. And see, the Holy Spirit in you, you didn't feel anything when your spirit, when he, when he dwelled on the inside of you. But there are a lot of things on the inside of you that you have not felt or even seen. But you know they're there. You haven't touched your lungs, but you know they're there. You haven't touched your liver, but you know it's there. 
You haven't seen your kidney, but you know it's there. So just like I know that they're there, I know that the Holy Spirit is in me, and I'm going to rely on him to help me live the overcoming abundant life. So what do we rely on the Holy Spirit for? I want you to get uh, these several things because we have to rely on the Holy Spirit. Number one, for answered prayers. Somebody shout out answered prayers. One of the most important facets of our lives in Christ is our prayer life. And it is refreshing to know that the ministry of the Holy Spirit is to help our prayer, our prayer life, help us pray more effectively and on point. You know, you can know that you have accuracy and answered prayers. Why? Because I'm relying on the Holy Spirit. The Bible says in Romans 8, 26, likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself make it intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered and he that searcheth the heart knoweth what is the mind of the spirit because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God I'm going to speak on this a little bit later but you've got to know that you've got to start relying on the Holy Spirit and praying in the spirit because the Holy Spirit uh, is there for answered prayers somebody shout out answered prayers we must rely on the Holy Spirit for answered prayers but we also rely on him for anointed power shout out anointed power see when Jesus taught on power during his ministry he was really teaching on our authority but when he prophesied about the power of the Holy Spirit he was declaring a supernatural ability on your life the Bible says in Acts chapter 1 verse 8 in the Amplified Version, but you shall receive power, ability, efficiency, and might when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends, the very bounds of the earth. You've got to know that there's a power, an anointed power, not just for you to shout, but there's a power for you to have supernatural ability. And when I rely on the Holy Spirit, I I've got the ability to do things beyond who I am by myself. We rely on the Holy Spirit for answered prayers. We rely on the Holy Spirit for anointed power. Here's the third one. Get this. We must rely on the Holy Spirit for abundant provisions. See, God, through the ministry of the Holy Spirit, wants to reveal to us the power of things that eyes have not seen and ears have not heard that God has placed on his agenda for our lives. It's more than a scripture that we quote. You've got to know that when you rely on the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is going to connect you and show you some things that eyes have not seen. You haven't even seen what God wants to do in your life, but because I've been fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit, that there are some things that I have not seen and ears have not heard that God places on his agenda for my life. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 9 says, But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God had prepared for them that love him, but God had revealed them. But God had revealed them unto us by his spirit for the spirit searcheth all things yea the deep things of God so while I'm declaring eyes have not seen and ears have not heard I'm spending time fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit I'm spending time praying in my prayer language because I understand that the Holy Spirit has searched the deep things of God and he's going to reveal it to me by because he understands some things that I don't know and he already understands the abundant provisions that God has for my life here's the next one we must rely on the Holy Spirit for ability to perform this is good right here because see nothing is too hard for God and we are empowered to perform the amazing and outstanding because of the resident power of the Spirit in us. I love this. This is what makes the Holy Spirit important and why we cannot allow it to lie dormant in our lives. Because when you rely on the Holy Spirit, it gives you the ability to perform at the exceeding abundant level. The Bible says in Ephesians 3.20, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us I can step up to the challenge why because I'm relying on the Holy Spirit to give me the ability to perform at the level that others would back down from he gives me the ability to solve problems and have the wisdom of God I have the ability to perform when I've been relying on the Holy Spirit 
Here's the next one. We must rely on the Holy Spirit for accomplishment of purpose. See, purpose is the key to fulfillment, and it is the work of the Holy Spirit to guide us into what God has prepared for us to fulfill our purpose in life. The Bible says in Ephesians 2.10, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, works which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. So I rely on the Holy Spirit for answer prayers, for anointed power, for abundant provisions for ability to perform and to and the accomplishment for purpose so that I can do more he's not just something that I pick up on Sunday it's not just something that I'm aware of and I got it salvation but he's at work in my life and I'm relying on him to live at the exceptional level now let's talk about the power of the Pentecostal experience because the Pentecost experience is most dynamic and when you study it, you understand it's more than just an event. It's more than just an event and unfortunately most believers experience the work of the Spirit at salvation and they never go any further in experiencing his power day by day. You ought to be experiencing the power of the Holy Spirit every day of your life. And I, I don't know about you, but I don't want to stop short and just say it was for my salvation. No, the Holy Spirit is in me for my everyday living. And see, when you get a real perspective on the dynamic power of the Holy Spirit, you understand that what God does in the earth, he will do it now by and through his Holy Spirit. Remember, he is the agent of God in the earth to perform the work of God. So I understand that the power of the Holy Spirit is in your life and in my life for regeneration. See, we are human spirits have been regenerated, made new by the Holy Spirit at salvation. So he lives in us as a representative of Jesus. See, this ought to make some of you excited because you understand who you used to be. And because of the power of the Holy Spirit, I'm not what I used to be. I've been made a new creature. Titus 3, 5 says in the New Living Translation, he saved us not because of the righteous things we've done, but because of his mercy. He washed away our sins, giving us a new birth and a new life through the Holy Spirit. I need to say that again. Giving us a new birth and new life through the Holy Spirit. He generously poured out the Spirit upon us through Jesus Christ our Savior. Because of his grace, he made us right in his sight and gave us confidence that we will inherit eternal life. I'm not who I used to be when I said yes to the Lord. He wiped my slate clean and the Holy Spirit is in my life and works through my life and gives me a power so I can walk in confidence. I've been made a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. The power of the Holy Spirit is in your life for regeneration. Here's the second one. The power of the Holy Spirit is in your life for revelation. And this is where it gets exciting because, see, the Holy Spirit's ministry in our lives is much more than an emotional feeling. But it's about him revealing to us the things of God. If I want to know what God, the mind of God, the heart of God, I want to know what God has for my life. The Bible says that he reveals them unto us by his spirit. Go over to John 16 verse 12. Verse 12 in the New Living Translation says, there's so much more I want to tell you, but you can't bear it now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. Talking about the Holy Spirit. He will not speak on his own, but will tell you what he has heard. He will tell you about the future. He will bring me glory by telling you whatever he receives from me. All that belongs to the father is mine. This is why I have said the spirit will tell you whatever he receives from me. When you understand the power of the Holy Spirit in your life for revelation, you stop trying to search for your daily horoscope because you understand I don't need a horoscope to tell me my future. I just need to spend some time fellowship him with fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit knows my future and he's going to reveal it to me because he's already heard some things about my life he's entered in rooms that I have not entered he knows the future for my life and he's going to share with me so I can walk in the revelation of what God has for my life 
power of the Holy Spirit is in your life for regeneration, for revelation, but also for refreshing. Somebody shout out refreshing. See, this is good news because I understand that the Holy Spirit keeps me refreshed. Therefore, burnout is not possible for me. See, when I've been spending time with the Holy Spirit and I'm not just looking at him as something that makes me feel good uh, in a church service or uh, just on a day and I understand that he's within me, I understand that he's a refreshing that I need to make it through life situation. David in Psalms 23 said it like this, he restored my soul. Look at 2 Corinthians 3, 18 that the Apostle Paul shares with us about the refreshing ministry of the Holy Spirit. It says, but we all with open face beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Chapter 4, verse 1 says, therefore seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. I, I think somebody needs to take a picture of that if they put it on the screen. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, what ministry? The ministry of the Holy Spirit. And because I have the ministry of the Holy Spirit, I receive mercy. And because of that, we faint not. Difficult situations show up, but I don't faint because I got the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Hard times may come, but I'm not going to give up. Why? Because I got the ministry of the Holy Spirit. I may be working a lot and doing a lot, but burnout is not an option. Why? Because he restored my soul. I got the Holy Spirit on the inside of me. And because he's in me, we faint not power of the Holy Spirit is in your life for regeneration. It's in your life for revelation. Others will be amazed about the wisdom that you have. Why? I've been spending time with the Holy Spirit. Thank God for my degree. I got a couple of them, but my degrees don't compare to the download that I get from being in the presence of the and fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit reveals some things to me that I need to know for situations in life. The Holy Spirit, I rely on him and in the power of the Holy Spirit is in our life for refreshing. Here's the fourth one. The power of the Holy Spirit is in your life for resourcefulness. We say it all the time, but it's time you start believing that you will never be without creative wit, ideas, and strategies because the power of the Holy Spirit keeps you resourceful and wise. We quote it all the time, Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Can I show you that in the Amplified Version? They're going to put it on the screen. It says, I have strength for all things in Christ who empowers me. I am ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses inner strength into me. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. I need somebody to get this because you got to know and understand that nothing is too hard for God. You can do all things. You're not going to run out of creative ideas. You're not going to run out of strategy. You're not going to face a situation you cannot handle. Why? Because the power of the Holy Spirit is infusing the inner strength in me. So when problems show up, I got the answer to every problem. And others will scratch their head about how you do what you do because they don't understand how you have the wisdom that you have. It's beyond your years. It's beyond your pedigree. It's beyond your background. I've been with the Holy Spirit and the power of the Holy Spirit gives me wisdom that I need for every situation. See, this is when our children go to the next level. I got a hold of this as a kid because test taking and, and school used to be a challenge. But I found out that the Holy Spirit would help me take a test. So when I would take a test in class, I would spend a moment and pray in the Holy Spirit and remind myself of the scripture. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Those grades turned around. I, I was on the dean's list. I have no challenges. Why? Because the power of the Holy Spirit gives me the wisdom that I need, the strategy that I need, the creative ideas that I need for every situation in life. So they look and say, how is she running a mega church? How does she have men in her church? How does she solve those problems? How does she know the answer to that? And she didn't go to school. I've been praying in the Holy Spirit. And when I pray in the Holy Spirit, he gives me the resourcefulness that I need for every situation. They can't 
believe it. So they say, apostle has to be in the background pulling the string. But you know at the light that I am the senior pastor of this church, not by my wit alone, not by my education, not by seminary, but it's the power of the Holy Spirit on the inside of me. The profile of the dynamic power of the Holy Spirit is, you know, many times to help us understand things better, we got to get a picture. So I want to take you to a picture of the Holy Spirit. And I really want to look at the life of one in the Old Testament so that we get this picture so we can have this expectation of the same like anointing functioning in our lives. And even though we know that we have been given a better covenant that's built on better promises than those in the Old Testament, we do know that the purpose of the Holy Spirit Spirit's anointing is to empower us and empower the believer to accomplish the will of God and fulfill divine assignments in the earth. See, whenever there was an assignment given in the Old Testament or even given in scripture, there was an empowerment to do the assignment. So under the Old Testament, the Spirit of God was not present in all believers as he is today. So there was special anointing for service for those who the Spirit of God was upon. And so when you look at the life of De David, and he's out on the battlefield with Goliath, you can see seven of these expectations that we ought to have in our lives because of the partnership with the Holy Spirit. See, for time's sake, I cannot read uh, the 30 verses in 1 Samuel, but let me give you a recap of David's life. God sends the prophet Samuel to David's father's house to anoint him the next king of Israel. And so David wasn't initially invited into the inquiry that he had because David's own father did not see kingship potential in him. Can I pause for a moment and speak on this? Just because they don't see kingship potential in you does not take away the assignment and the grace on your life. Just because they don't recognize the anointing on your life doesn't mean that you're not anointed for the assignment. David's own father didn't invite him to his own anointing ceremony, but the prophet said, everybody that you brought before me is not the one. There has to be somebody else. Oh, there's just David in this field. They may say that about you. Oh, that's just her over there. Or that's just him over there. But when you've been with the Holy Spirit and you understand that you've got an anointing on your life and an empowerment on your life, they may discount you, but one day they're going to have to recognize and celebrate what God has done in your life. The Bible says David is brought before the prophet. He's anointed king and the Bible says in 1 Samuel 16, then Samuel took the horn of oil, anointed him in the midst of his brethren and the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. Now we understand what really made the difference. Where others were scared of Goliath, David had a boldness about taking out the giant. Because he understood the spirit of the Lord was upon him. He had an anointing for the assignment. So here are seven things that we can have an expectation for walking in because of our partnership with the Holy Spirit. That means I'm not just praying every now and then. I'm not just praying when I'm in trouble. But day by day, I'm fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit. I'm in partnership with the Holy Spirit. He's in me, not just for one Sunday of the year, but for every day, 365 days, 24-7 and it is through the power of the spirit we can expect the elimination of fear. David was willing to fight when all the trained warriors were scared of Goliath because when I understand it's a power and I've got a partnership with the Holy Spirit, it eliminates fear in my life. Number two, through the power of the spirit, we can expect the wisdom of God to function. See, David had the wisdom of God to use stones to take out Goliath instead of a sword. It was a wisdom strategy from the Lord. See, when I understand the power of the spirit, I'm expecting God to give me wisdom so I can function at another level. Number three, it's through the power of the spirit that we can expect the increased expectation of success. David starts speaking bold about taking the job out. He talked about his victory before it even happened because he understood that there was a bonus that was from the Lord. He had an anointing on his life. You got to start expecting success in every situation. Through the power of the Spirit, we can expect the favor to accomplish your task. It was the Holy Spirit working that caused others to bring David before the king. Because, see, they could have just, you know, laughed at him. But they understood, man, this boy must be talking about something. And they used their power, their ability to bring David before the 
okay when you've been fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit and you understand the power of the Holy Spirit you have an expectation for God to raise up somebody somewhere to use their power their ability and their influence to help you they may not even like you but they'll go out of their way to use their favor on your behalf the next one is the power through the power of the spirit we can expect the supernatural ability to fulfill the assignment see the power of the Holy Spirit was on David as a warrior from the day he was anointed in Jesse's house to, for the rest of his life see there's a power for you to perform and have supernatural ability for, to fulfill your assignment if he gave you the assignment he's going to equip you with the power to carry it out when God gives you an assignment you got to know you are empowered to carry out that assignment there was supernatural ability to fulfill the assignment others could not take him out but there was a supernatural ability on David to take out the giant number six through the power of the spirit we can expect unexplainable results I like this one you may want to write this down because of the power of the spirit and our partnership with the Holy Spirit, knowing that he is in us to accomplish more. I expect unexplainable results. Others will scratch their head of how I'm living how I'm living. You can't explain it, but it's that God factor. It's the anointing on my life. It's the Holy Spirit. It's the power of the Spirit working on my life. How do you explain an inexperienced shepherd boy killing a veteran warrior? Who would have ever thought that was possible? Others didn't think it was possible, but with God, all things are possible, and there were some unexplainable results. Here's the seventh thing. Through the power of the Spirit, we can expect the glorifying of God. David and Israel glorified God, and so it should be in our lives that when God does the supernatural through us, that he alone gets the praise. He gets the glory. He gets the honor. Man may recognize your wit, but this is really about God being glorified in every situation of my life. But there is a phenomena of the dynamic power of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says on the day of Pentecost, there was this phenomena of tongues. That as they all they were there, they were amazed because they began to speak in other tongues. And when question of the text was asked, it was because of this phenomenon of them hearing people from different regions speaking in their tongues and being understood. We can see that uh, there's a supernatural manifestation that was not only witnessed that day, but on occasion after occasion of believers being filled with the Holy Spirit just as Peter. See, you got to know that the great news is that this phenomenon of Pentecost it wasn't just back in the day, but it is available to everyone. Every believer today who will not stop short of the fullness of the Pentecost experience so that you can see the supernatural in your life. See, I want to speak on it because a lot of times we want to talk about the Holy Spirit being in us, but we don't want to talk about having our own personal prayer language. And I don't want you to stop short and miss the power and the dynamic power of being filled with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Because truth be told, it is this phenomenon that is the catalyst for the supernatural in the life of every believer. And it's for us today. When you look in the Bible, you see so many examples of, of the supernatural taking place after a yes to God. It was when the Spirit of God rested upon Moses after he said yes, that he experienced the supernatural miracles took place. I just want to walk you through the scripture as we close this out because I don't want you to stop short of what God has for you. It was when the Spirit of God rested upon Joshua after he said yes, that he experienced the supernatural battles were won. It was when the Spirit of God rested upon Gideon after he said yes that he experienced the supernatural he won with the odds stacked against him it was when the spirit of God rested upon Elijah that after he said yes that he experienced the supernatural he called fire down from heaven it was when the spirit of God rested upon Elisha after he said yes that he experienced the supernatural he saw the dead raised it was when the spirit of God rested upon Samson after he said yes that he experienced the supernatural 
supernatural, his strength returned to him. It was when the spirit of God rested upon David after he said, yes, he experienced the supernatural. He killed giants and won battle after battle after battle. It was when the spirit of God rested upon the disciples after they said, yes, that they experienced the supernatural. The Bible says that blind eyes were open. The lame began to walk. The deaf began to hear. The dead were raised. When you say yes to God and you get filled with the Holy Spirit, you too will experience the supernatural. And I want all that God has for me. There's anointing that comes upon your life when you're fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit. It gives you the ability to live life supernaturally without exhaustion or anxiety. I don't get worried in difficult situations because I understand the power of the Holy Spirit. And I've been fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit. I've been praying in my prayer language and so nothing is too hard for God. I'm tapping into the supernatural power of God. And what happens most of the time with believers, we get caught up in songs about him. but we never venture out in faith beyond the song and beyond the initial glorious experience with the Holy Spirit of being saved and I don't want you to stop short this morning of experiencing the ongoing fullness of him being and working in your life by being filled with the Holy Spirit you got to commit I'm going to fellowship with him because God has much more in store for me and what I don't want you to do is to be a part of the list of those who stop short Uh, of their God-given purpose and potential. It's a tragedy to stop short and not see God do everything that he said. Uh, Terror started to Canaan but stopped short in Haran. Many Israelites started in Canaan but they stopped short in the wilderness. King Saul started with an anointing but stopped short because of disobedience. Solomon started with greatness but stopped short in uncontrolled lust. Gehazi started with Elijah but stopped short because he lied. Judas started with Jesus but stopped short of greatness because of his greed. Jesus started the redemption and he almost stopped short in Gethsemane but he said not my will but thy will be done. And I don't know about you but I'm going all the way with God. I want his fullness in my life. I want his power working in my life. I want his power working in my everyday situation. I need his power so I can walk right. I need his power so I don't miss what God has for me I want everything that God has for me so my answer will be yes I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit I wake up daily fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit he's got some things that eyes have not seen that ears have not heard I need the download in my life what happens many times is that we got the power but it's lying dormant because we won't make a demand on the Holy Spirit It's like you putting fresh batteries in a light but never flipping the switch. When you put the batteries in, the flashlight has the power to illuminate the room. But until you flip the switch, the power is not released. You got to start making a demand on the power that's in you. There's a power in you that raised Jesus from the dead. There's a power in you that speaks to situations and they have to obey. There's a power in you that causes things that are out of order to lie up there's a power in you to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover there's a power in you that that causes you to speak those to those things and cause them to obey God's word there's a power in you that causes situations to turn around but you've got to use and tap into the power that's on the inside of you through the ministry of the Holy Spirit supernatural life available to all of us but you got to decide what kind of response you're gonna have Are you going to be like the rich young ruler and have a rejected response because it requires a little bit more of you? In essence, he said, you must be out of your mind if you think I'm going to sell everything I have and give to the poor. He wasn't ready for the next level. Then, or you can have a resentful response like Naaman when the prophet told him to go dip himself in the mud, the muddy waters of the Jordan to receive his healing. In essence, he said, who are you talking to, me? 
You want me to go dip myself in that dirty water? He almost missed it, but thank God that girl was there to push him because at that moment he wasn't ready, but his next level was waiting on his response. Now, you can have a reserve response and say, I'll get it together later. Don't, don't have a ready reserve response. Don't have a rejected response. Don't have a resentful response. But what God is looking for this morning is for those of you who will have a ready response that says, I want to experience the supernatural power of God every day of my life. I want all that God has for me. I want the new level that God has for me. I want much more of God. You got to decide you're going to be like Peter when he jumps out of the boat and walks on water. He was ready for the supernatural. You got to decide you're going to be like the blind man who rushes to the pool to wash the mud off his eyes. He was ready to see the supernatural. You got to decide I'm going to be like the woman at the well. I'm going to leave my past behind but I'm going to tell others about a man that I met. I've encountered living water. She was ready to experience the supernatural. You got to decide I'm ready for all that God wants to do in my life. I'm like blind Bartimaeus that when others tried to get him to shut up he kept crying the more. He took off his beggar's garment knowing that I won't need that anymore because I'm about to step over into the supernatural. I'm looking for some believers this morning who are ready to step over into the supernatural. I'm ready to step into the level of all that God has for me. I'm like the man with the withered hand who stretched out his hand at the command of Jesus. His stretch was saying, I'm ready to see the supernatural. I'm like Mary and Martha who moved the stone of their dead brother. I'm ready to see the supernatural resurrect some things in my life. And if my grandmother was here this morning, if my grandmother was here this morning, she would testify in the words of the old 1800 hymn. They used to sing it in the Baptist church. Some of you know about this. I heard the voice of Jesus say, come unto me and rest. Lay down, oh weary one. Lay down your head upon my breast. I came to Jesus just as I was. So weary, worn, and sad. But I found in him a resting place. And he has made me glad. I really like the second verse that those, uh, they rarely sing it. But it says, I heard the voice of Jesus say, behold, I freely give. The living water, thirsty one, stoop down and drink and live. I came to Jesus and I drank of that life-giving stream. My thirst was quenched. My soul revived. And now I live in him. I'm looking for some people this morning who are thirsty for all that God has for you and say, Pastor, I'm ready for the supernatural. I'm ready to lead the mundane life and I'm ready to step over into the supernatural. I'm ready to go to the next level that God has for my family, that God has for my church. I'm ready to see things that eyes have not seen seen ears have not heard i'm ready to step over and watch god do things that others would would scratch their head about i'm ready to see god heal the sick like never before i'm ready for signs and wonders and miracles i'm ready to see the supernatural